pretty exciting topic. Not gonna lie, I, I often have you know dreams about it. Yep. But joke, sorry. Trying to be humorous. This is a pretty dry topic, which is relatively simple. It sounds a lot more complicated than it is. And we're gonna try to talk about how we can do this, why we have to do it, and just kind of do it for today. And then we have it in our uh, <coughs> in our toolbox, if you will, our ability to do this as the year goes on when we get to curve graphs. Because now we're moving away from just uh, straight line graphs all the time we had in the last unit. Now we're moving into objects that are going to be speeding up and slowing down, changing speed, if you will. So those nice linear graphs we had last chapter, to some extent, are going to be a thing in the past. We're going to have actual curve graphs to try and deal with. But sadly, most of us, I know I clearly don't know how to don't know how to find the equation of a curved line just from a point on a piece of paper. Uh, and so that can be a problem for us because the first lab we do, we're going to have data that's curved. And if we were to try to find that medical model, we wouldn't necessarily know how to do that just from those looking at a graph. And so we have this process called linearization that hopefully will help us be able to do that. So here's how that's going to work. So in this lab, we're going to do essentially. Oh my Today we're going to do, we're going to have a graph. I'm just going to uh, maybe make up some letters here so it's less confusing. So you have an A variable and a B variable like that. And we're going to get uh, some sort of curved graph out of this. But I don't necessarily know how to deal with that kind of graph. Because the only thing I really know about in terms of making a, a what you call it, an equation is if I have some sort of straight line graph, then I can pull out my old y equals mx plus b. That. And that's something I can deal with. So I need to find some way, perhaps, to incorporate what I do know into what I'm going to have to deal with there. Before we do that, can someone, can anyone explain kind of briefly why or what the difference in those two lines is, other than what's curved and what's not? Why are they curved or not, Trevor? Um, I'll call the one on the right the second graph. Uh, the second graph has a, a constant velocity. Uh, so there's, there's just A's and B's. Okay. There's, there's, there's no velocity or anything here. Okay, well, the A over B is constant throughout the second graph. And Which are the constant slope? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Great. There's A over B, right? It's slope, yeah. right? Good. And this has a what over here? That one has an increasing slope. Uh, Increases, okay, changing right now. It's a triangle, a change, changing slope over here. So that's the basic difference between a curved graph and a linear graph, right, is that the curved graph has a changing slope and the linear graph on the right has a constant slope. And so that's our problem. What specifically, or what does it mean to have a constant slope? What does that mean to me if my slope is constant? What's the true of my data? What does it mean to be linear about the numbers? How are the numbers related to each other? Direct. In intervals, the, 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 uh, I'll say, uh, so far as the change in the uh, each variable is uh, proportional each time we go along. And so in a linear graph, we might get one bigger this way, then two bigger that way, then one more bigger, then two more bigger, one more bigger, two more bigger, the whole way up. That's a constant slope. The rate of change between the variables is the same the whole way through the problem. What's happening in this graph on the left that's not that, that's causing it not to curve, or it's causing it to curve. What's different over here on the left graph? Anyone? So this was, we have a constant rate of change in the variables. What's happening over here? Are the variables changing at the same rate, do you think? No. Francis? Which one is? Which variable? Are they both growing exponentially, or is it one of the two? What? Hey, good. So in this graph, because and we know it's, how do you know it's A, Francis? Do you know why you know it's A? Or do you just know it is? Good, as opposed to flattening out. Great. So normally this graph would look like that if it weren't growing exponentially. But since this blue line is curving upward from kind of the normal path it would take, that tells me that A is increasing at a faster rate than B is. And so that's what's causing this curve to happen. What could I do, do you think, in order to get that blue line back kind of lined up with the orange line? Is there a way I can do that? Is there a way I can make that curve? If I wanted to maybe adjust a variable, what could I do there? Just 
mathematically thinking, what what could you do to make those the, the change that? Thoughts, guesses. Anyone have any crazy ideas? Not that crazy. So if this one's growing faster, is there a way I can help the, the B variable catch up? What can I do to the B numbers? If I had a bunch of data here, you know, numbers over here, numbers over here, what can I do to these numbers to make them line up with those numbers? Kind of math operations. You have about five choices, stupid name, maybe, I don't know. Probably not subtracting, probably not dividing. Just have three choices. Square root. Square root. Which one would you square root? Okay, that's one option. You could square root this A guy, and that would cause the A variable to get smaller and slow it down, so to speak, such that A and C were then, or A and B, excuse me, were increasing at a similar rate. However, anyone here like square roots? No way. No, they're horrible and icky. So what? <laughs> So if we say didn't want to square root this thing, what what could we do with the B that would be similar to square rooting the A? Square. We could square the B term. And the only reason that would be perhaps preferred is that if we then want to take this equation and do more math with it in some other way, like find intersecting lines or something, we probably don't want to deal with a square rooted A. We'd probably rather deal with a squared B value. Okay. Otherwise, mathematically it's the same thing. You do a mark set or you can square the B. But this would probably be the preferred and more common method to take. So if we do that, that then in theory will give us out a linearized graph with uh, A on this axis and then B squared on that axis. What that will do for us is it won't change the data. It won't change what it's telling us, but it's going to change the way it looks. I have to think of it essentially you know, the same way I would think of as a unit conversion. I'm just converting the way this graph is going to look. It's important to note you now have a different axis over there. So while the line might look linear, you're not graphing A versus B. You're graphing A versus B squared. So that relationship is linear. A versus B is still exponential. Okay, so in your brain, you have to make sure you remember what we're actually doing. I don't want you to think all of a sudden that we change the relationship. This thing is still getting, A is still getting bigger faster than B is. We're just graphing it now in a way and now we can bust out this equation and do something useful with it. Okay, questions about that? Let's say, for example, now that we knew the slope of this, well, we'll wait for that for a minute, actually. So the way this would work uh, in a mathematical sense, it lets you have some numbers. Let's look, actually, let's look at it in the x in the actually that might be more telling uh, do I have a little spreadsheet here here we go so good this is uh, some data we have here we can see first our a <coughs> these might be our initial a and b values are like 1 through 8 for the a's and then 1 4 9 16 5, 30, 48 64 for the b I just took all my a numbers and I squared them for the B. So this is basically a Y equals X squared setup, right? And so that gave me the red curve graph down here. I wanted to linearize that, so I took the square, I squared all the A numbers, and that then gave me linear data just like that. So that's the basic process we're gonna go through. We're gonna square a column and re-graph the two columns you want to graph. Make sense? Am I talking different or anything? Question? Now, this won't work for every set of data we ever get, especially if they're just made up numbers. What is convenient, though, is that nature, whoever invented this world that we live in, set up the system where most natural phenomena, if they're exponential, will work with one of these methods that will work when you do linearize it. Like gravity, for example, you've got something that's accelerating, you sort of graph that, you get a curve, and you use this process, it, it would work out every time. The most natural phenomena that give us curved graphs will linearize properly in a nice way. Sometimes you'll apply this though, you have a curve and try to linearize it, you've got it all over the place and have no relationship, and it won't work. And then you just say, okay, I can't do that. And then you hopefully have a computer or something that will do that for you. Who knows? But that's the basic idea. There are three kinds of graphs we have to know how to linearize. You've seen one. Yay. 
Where's my mouse? The first kind of graph I usually refer